Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello kids and welcome to season three and episode number 332 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. And uh, it's a little bit of a great day here at the Beaver Lodge. Hopefully, uh, Things will uh, spark up, but um, we do need some rain. The water tables are a little low, so that uh, would be helpful. I am your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you, Ghost Rock Podcast funding sponsors, The Peppermaster, The Misfee Mysteries from Covered Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a nibble for you this morning, but before we do anything else, let's hope Mr. Grizzly's doing better. And how's your mental health doing today, sir? Well, as I uh, mute myself before I cough into the microphone, uh, physically, I'm still far from great. Um, emotionally, I'm not too bad. Mentally, I'm, I'm actually surprisingly good. It's amazing what the addition of a uh, furry family member will do to pick you up, you know. So, yeah, th- thankfully, uh, emotionally, I'm pretty good. Uh, physically, I'm just, I'm still... I'm going to be working from home again today. I don't want to go into the office and get people sick with a bronchial infection. Yeah. You know, that's the last thing I want to do is, is get other people ill by being an irresponsible jackass. I won't do that. I might be a jackass, but I won't be an irresponsible one. Good man. <laughs> uh, was the doctor able to do anything for you? Well, uh, yeah, just minor. It's just a simple, uh, it's not, men, it's not. Uh, well, not walking pneumonia? Thank you. And not COVID, just a bronchial infection. And I, I've used to get them a lot when I was younger, uh, quite a bit when I was younger, but not so much uh, anymore. So I recognized it kind of right away that it was bronchitis, like a bronchial infection. Hmm. Uh, due to the fact that, you know, it, it was yesterday was the roughest day since. So Saturday is when I started to get sick and yesterday was okay. the worst day. And I'm feeling much better today. So, okay. It's just a matter of getting over it, uh, and it takes time. Sleep, medication, isolation, stay away from people. Like I, you know, went to the doctor yesterday, wore my mask everywhere I went. Walking on the street, uh, went to the first clinic, and they're like, "Oh, well, it's not a walk-in clinic." I'm like, "You might want to put that on your website because it doesn't say that," <laughs> which is the closest one. There is a clinic up the street from me, but it's like a, just a doctor's office, and which on Elgin, where my doctor's office used to be. Okay. But uh, when their lease was up for renewal, I guess the owners of the building wanted to jack the rates, and uh, all the other doctors in the practice said nope, and they moved out. Uh, so now they're up on Montreal Road. So if I want to go uh, to a doctor's appointment, I really got to plan it out because I, it's, a, it's a couple of buses to get there. Yeah. Or a or a very expensive Uber ride, which you know. Uh, if I was in 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 the state where I needed to spend that much money on an Uber to get somewhere, I would just go straight to ER, the eMERGE, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm 
glad to hear that you're feeling better. And from what I'm seeing in the comments, the kids are too. Hopefully, uh, you'll uh, be back to your old self in no time flat. This is what I'm hoping. I'm I, like I I I've been in touch with my office, and I was you know working remotely, and said, yeah, it's a bronchial infection. It's not COVID, and it's not walking pneumonia. So that's a good thing. But uh, I've been told to isolate, and which I'm going to do. I just I don't want to get people sick, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nope, that's I said very responsible. I try. Oh. <laughs> so uh, shall we shall we dig into the the lies that the cons have been caught up in again? Um, sure. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the uh, the the yarns they're spinning about uh, how prisoners have it better than most Canadians, which is an absolute pile of garbage. Yep. There's no truth to that whatsoever. Yep. Yeah. That that all started with um, uh, hearing that uh, Luca Magnata was going to be transferred uh, from maximum security to medium security. So it's basically the Bernardo thing all over again. Yep. Uh, and the Picton thing all over again. Oh my God! I can't believe he's going to get a hearing. He might get free. Like, is there any reality in which you know reality, dimension, galaxy, solar system, universe, planet, continent? country postal code or area code in which everybody's going to go hey let's free robert picton um uh, certainly uh, this guy here pagnata as well who's you know there are a few people that are irredeemable we like to believe that our incarceration system uh starts with the premise that people are redeemable mm -hmm. which is why we have the right to have a hearing and all that kind of stuff and which applies to Everyone, no exceptions, because we don't make exceptions based on how awful people are, because all it takes then is for someone to move the bar a little lower and a little lower and a little lower as to what is considered uh, you know, reasons. That's why we have principles, because they apply to everyone. And um, yep, yeah, this uh, Magnata thing uh, comes along, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, Skippy's using words like, and very strategically using words like, yes. Magnata has been freed. Yeah, yeah, not even close. Into <laughs> sort of like medium, medium security, uh, which is, of course, you know, just the typical fear congering again, right? Mm -hmm. like, ah, it's be afraid, be afraid. I need you to live in fear. Be afraid. And then blaming it all on C83, which was the bail reform bill, which was basically passed for. I'm not going to say for the most part, maybe because I'm not that familiar with it, but a very, very key part of that bill was making sure that, well, not making sure, but trying to address the fact that our incarceration system is uh, too plentiful with people with uh, pigmentation and people who are indigenous. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, since then, they've been point into that bill and saying, oh, this is responsible for everything. Anytime somebody that was once in jail or something pulls another crime or is on release of some kind, they point to that, they blame that. And every time somebody gets you know, transferred to medium security, you know, someone who's universally disliked uh, or pretty much because, you know, maybe their mother still loved them. Mm -hmm. um, One would imagine. Yeah, but but you know what I mean? It's then all of a sudden, you know, it's ah, and these are the same people, of course, that lost their minds because they thought that Justin Trudeau interfered with the judicial system when it came to SNC Lavalin. Anytime that there's someone who is notorious that has an opportunity, their constitutional opportunity to have a parole hearing or they get transferred to a lower security prison. It's Trudeau did this. Well, no, we yeah. actually have people. There's a whole board of people. We have a parole board and Correctional Services Canada and whatnot who do that and keep on calling for the government to interfere in the judicial system, something that they claimed up and down and back around again that they were against. Yeah. yeah. Um, we all know that's a crock. <sighs> so, yeah. So, uh, Once again, proving you don't go to conservatives for consistency. No, of course not. Why would you do that? All they want to do is get power, and they will say and do anything they can to get it and keep it, yep. and they will lie to your face. Yep. And then they, uh, then they, Pierre Polyev, 
put out another tweet, something like, you know, uh, unless you're a sadistic killer, mm. like life, you know, life is terrible in Canada. But if you're still a sadistic killer, life is great. They're, they're just living it up in medium security. They're, they have much better lives than all of you out there. It's like, well, if you believe that, Pierre, how about you switch places? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know what happened there. Am I still there? Yes. Yeah, you're back now. You, you disappeared for a second. It was Lost weird. all sound. Yeah, well, that's like you literally, you were gone and then you came back. I don't know what happened. Oh, you've got no sound at all. Well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody can still hear me, but yeah, on we can my hear screen, you. I've lost all sound. I can't hear Mr. Grizzly. All right. And I'm not moving. So <laughs> I don't know what happened. When Mr. Grizzly next uh, speaks, I'm going to uh, pop in and out to try and see if I can fix that. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, I'm just wondering like, well, Pierre, I, I'm not, I shouldn't say switch places because we don't want Magnata out. But uh, it's like all those Canadians that are saying that, uh, you know, gee, life is so terrible in Canada. Well, you know what? If it really is that terrible, there was a tweet like that yesterday. I, I don't, I'm, I'm really seriously thinking of leaving. Where should I go? And it's like, you know, I hear uh, Russia's lovely this time of year. Yeah. And I hear that I Iran and Afghanistan are quite welcoming. And, you know, well, we as Canadians, we do tend to be neighborly. So if you, you know, I'll help you pack. want us to help you pack. Yeah. Or uh, maybe you'd like Hungary. Harper seems to love it. Yeah. But, you know, so, you know, if you're that unhappy living in Canada, our charter has immigration rights. You're allowed to leave. We're not going to hold you back. Go find your bliss somewhere else. And I guess same thing to you, Pierre Podiev. I mean, if you really think that life is much better in prison than outside of it, then, well, do something to go inside. Why don't you spend a weekend? Go live there. In a cell and tell us what it's really like. I'm like, okay. I need you to keep talking because I'm going to Yeah, you, in you jump in and out. Because I need to hear yeah, you. I can't yeah, converse with I you. I know. Let's <laughs> go ahead and jump in and out. And uh, he'll he'll join us back in a minute. I don't know what happened. It was weird. We were talking away and he just, you can hear me now, I guess. Can you? Okay, good. That was very strange. Like we were talking and then you like disappeared off the screen altogether as in yep. you weren't even in the studio. And then yep. you pop back up. And when you pop back up, you couldn't hear anything. So Magic. anyway, we're here. <laughs> and, and Creek Pete has joined us. He is in the chat. I see him there. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Ah, uh, so yeah. And then there was another lie, apparently, about a tennis court and the hockey arena and yeah, well, that the, kind of stuff. I'm not that familiar with The that tennis one. court is there, and there is a, a rink there. The rink hasn't been used in a couple of years. And they're like, wow, that's like, well, actually, they've always had access to facilities like that, even in a place like Kingston Penitentiary, where they have a gymnasium a baseball diamond, a weight room. They've always had recreational and exercise facilities in every prison in this country, like since forever. It's not out of the ordinary. While well, they're not being punished, they're locked in a cell 22 hours a day. But we need to punish them harder. And, and, and how has that punishment system worked out for us? If you compare the system that they use in Scandinavia, as in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, where they actually have reformatory prisons and where they actually teach them skills, where they actually try and get people back into society, and they have the lowest rates of recidivism in the world. Now, truth be told, our rates of recidivism are very, very low. Yes. In the G7, I think they're actually among the lowest. But mm -hmm. in Scandinavia, their system is just vastly superior to ours. But of course, when you have cons who are saying they need to be punished because they are scum, they're less than human. So what they want to do is remove your charter rights, which apply to every single living, breathing Canadian across the world. No matter where you are in Canada, those rights in this country are yours, even when you're imprisoned. You might not like that, but the charter either applies to everybody equally or it applies to no one. And you need to understand that, yep. which is why prisoners have the right to vote. I was just going to say that, unlike, in, unlike the UN, United States. That's right. Once you've been in prison in the U.S., you lose your right to vote for the rest of your life. Now, 
Uh, let's think about that statement for a sec. Who is it that get locks, gets locked up the most in the United States of America? Hmm. Who Hold gets on, I think we need some most? music. You think it's not a conspiracy, it's an actual plan. It started under Nixon. The DEA was started under Nixon so that they could lock up black people. Period. The guy who started the organization admitted to such about 10 or 15 years ago. He said that was the plan from day one. Once you've been incarcerated, you cannot vote ever again in the United States of America. Yep. So this is how they control the voting. This is how they dissuade people. They make it more and more difficult for you to be able to vote. They put polling stations further and further away. They arrest you. And once you have a record, you don't vote anymore. This is how they control you. In Canada, you have a vote, period, yeah. always and forever. Because if you're in prison, it's run by Correctional Services Canada, which is a governmental organization, and you have a right to have a say in your own care. Linda's nodding uh, on the head right here with her commentary. Linda always just knocks them out of the park. Yep. They need to give us someone to blame so we don't blame the real source of society's problems, which is mostly greedy, rich people. And that's the truth. Yep. Yeah, the 13th Amendment uh, was used to replace slavery. It states that criminals can be slaves under a prison system. How convenient. Yep. Now, that's in the United States of America. We don't have any of those things in Canada. Our Fifth Amendment was... Oh, if, if memory serves, Fifth Amendment was Manitoba to join Confederation. That's second. That's the Second Amendment. Yes, okay, that's sorry. the Second Amendment. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I you know I can't I can't keep them all straight in my head. <laughs> There's so many amendments. <laughs> um, you can't change the Second Amendment. Actually, you can. That's why it's called an amendment. Yep. So uh, the latest lie is, uh, you had it in the episode description, but like I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not up to speed on this one, is that a sitting MP claimed that inmates could play hockey and tennis and claimed to have run into Paul Bernardo on a prison tour. Then Padilla retweeted it, and now prison officials are saying, um, yeah, there's no working court or rink there, and the Bernardo thing, it seems, didn't happen. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I probably have to look that up and read more about that. But that reminds me a lot, uh, you know, claiming things that didn't happen you know, on a less um, scandalous uh, scale. You have Brienne and you have Mustafa, mm -hmm. but you also had that uh, conservative MP that stood up in the House uh, a couple of uh, terms ago and claimed that... Um, he had seen people go into recycling bids and take out people's voter cards or something like that so that they can go to yeah. a polling station vote because he seems to have forgotten that you need the voted card and ID. Yeah. You can't just show up with a voter's card no. <laughs> alone with no other ID or someone to vouch for you and actually cast a vote. But he was fear congering that, you know, there were people rifling through stuff and saying, Hey, I'm stealing your voter card and then I'm using it. And then he had to admit later in the house that well, he actually had not seen that with his own eyes. Even though he was an allegedly honorable member of the house and claimed in the house that he had seen it with his own eyes. Yeah. That's cute, right? Uh, <laughs> unimpressed face. Mm. Unimpressed face. An unimpressed face, too. Like when Skippy said that, you know, like eight years after years of Justin Trudeau, life is great if you're in Canada, if you're a sadistic killer. And I'm like sitting there like just, yeah. girl, really? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Imagine being so invested in the Canada's broken narrative that you would actually put your face and your name to a tweet that says, life is better in medium security prison than it is out. Yeah, that's... And look. expect to still be a credible candidate. Now, he will still be because, again, there are people on his side of stands, they'll just eat this shit up. They believe that we live in a tyranny, for Lord's sake. So, of course, they're going to believe that life is better in jail. 
These are the oh. same people who said we have no freedoms, who spent five days driving across the country to park in Ottawa for three plus weeks to shit on my streets and torture the hell out of my neighborhood and said we have no freedom. I guess they were trying to get themselves to jail to go live that better life. It must have been. That was the plan all along, wasn't it? It was such a loving. <laughs> it was such peaceful. I'd never experienced more acceptance. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Again, girl, please. please. <laughs> like, please. Jeez. It's like, we... Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We have now arrived at the we'll just say anything portion of the program. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Hmm. About the whole thing, right? He's like, he will say stupid shit like this. I mean, I would be putting this in a campaign commercial again. Liberals. Jenny was part of Loblaws. You didn't do a campaign ad on that. Well, not a campaign. You didn't do a um, contrast ad on that. Now you got Pierre Polyev telling people in Canada proudly that life is better in medium security. I would have an ad out. I would have an ad out. And it would be playing during basketball and baseball and hockey and all over the web. Those little 30 seconds before you're the thing that you get on the web to actually watch on YouTube starts, mm. it'd be there. So what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Why did like... You could, that's, that's something that you can take just like when Michelle Rempel says, gee, we're not going to get vaccines till 2030 and put it everywhere and just mock it. Laugh at them. Point and laugh. Yeah. And, you know, I get, I get really upset when she does that stuff because here's the thing. She's smarter than that. I've read a lot of what she's written. She's smarter than that. She's above that, and she stoops to it constantly, which just disappoint me, disappoints me constantly. Michelle, like Michelle Rumpel Garner, why do you continue to disappoint me? I know I'm a nobody, just some random guy in Ottawa who means nothing to you. But why do you have to disappoint so many Canadians? You're better than that. I've read what you've written. I've read what you've written about the WEF. I've read what you've written about same-sex marriage and how you stand up for the rainbow community. So why do you stoop to that level? You're better than that. Show us mm -hmm. it. Yep. So uh, I got uh, the article about it. It's an MP named uh, Frank Caputo, who is uh, relatively infamous on Twitter for having notoriously bad takes. Yeah. This is far from his first one. We've never mentioned him on the show before. But uh, yeah really far from his uh <laughs> let's just put it this is kind video. of this is kind of normal behavior for him oh yeah please let roll the tape we'll we'll play a little bit of it because it's almost yeah. seven minutes i'm not going to play oh. the whole thing but i'll, I'll no. play a little bit of it to give a taste yeah we'll give you a taste of it let me just blow it up here so we can see the whole thing and all right here that's that and i press a button over here and then it starts off with well a close-up of paul bernardo who by the way i I met when I was working at Kingston Penitentiary. Here we go. Watch this. Just a couple of minutes of it. He'll be all the way down to... I came face to face with Paul Bernardo. That's a lie. He actually didn't. That never happened. Corcan verified that. It never happened. So he starts off his seven-minute video with a bald face lie. And he's bald. Like me. You will not believe how this guy is living. So for those who don't know, especially for younger people in Canada, Paul Bernardo is the worst of the worst. He was known as the Scarborough Rapist. He did unspeakable sex offenses against numerous women. Ultimately, him and his whoa, wife were whoa, whoa, responsible whoa, whoa, whoa. for... He did unnumerable? As opposed to he committed? He did unnumerable yeah, sex offenses? I know. I know. Oh, oh, God. Dude. I know. I know. We'll yeah. play a little bit more. Three young women being killed. One of them was his own sister-in-law. Bernardo was eventually convicted for murder. He's serving... Here's what really disgusts me about this. He's using the murder of three women as a political tool here. Yeah, pretending he cares... He, he doesn't care. They're members. Like, 
you cannot use here's the you cannot use the memory of someone who passed away in that fashion in this way and yeah. still claim you care about them just like you can't be a pro-conservative supporter flashing an image of trudeau in blackface yeah. every chance you get yeah. and then claim that you're offended by him having done blackface on behalf of the black community especially like, look, again once again people out there who are not black who happen to be conservative supporters every time you post that blackface photo it just opens you are making everybody in canada who is black who sees it see a blackface photo yeah. if it was offensive to wear it it's offensive to share the photos <laughs> So let's continue. Multiple life sentences. He was also designated as a dangerous offender, which is the highest designation any criminal can receive in Canada. I'm a former Crown Prosecutor, so I've seen a lot of evil in this world, but I can safely say this guy is the worst of the worst. We do mm, not believe he um, can ever. Uh, I don't know. I so, think so Robert Picton would be the worst of the worst. Yeah, so, so this is Bernardo for people who weren't alive when it happened. Yeah be rehabilitated because his offenses were so bad. Mid-2023, Paul Bernardo had been in maximum security where he belonged for about 20 years. But in the dead of night, in the cloak of secrecy, oh, he was God. transferred to medium security. Okay, more bullshit. Dead of night in the cloak of secrecy. More bullshit. He's <sighs> just chumming the waters. None of that happened. Girl. The way he described it. Yes, he was moved to medium security because he was deemed he was no longer a risk and needed to be in maximum security by Corrections Canada, which is independent of the ruling government, the seated the government in power. Core can operates independently of them. Ugh. This guy is just spinning a web of lies. On Friday, news broke that the serial rapist and killer had already been transferred from this Ontario maximum security prison to a medium security one in Quebec. I've been in a lot of jails as a former parole officer, but I wanted to see for myself. I wanted to see what medium security was really like. So I went to the jail, La Macaza, where Paul Bernardo is incarcerated. Oh. I walked in and the... He's yeah. a crown prosecutor, he does all this stuff, but this is the first time he's ever gone to that institution uh -huh. now? Uh -huh. Okay, we're just at, for people listening at home, by the way, we're just at a minute 24 of this thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a seven minute video. We're not going to play the whole thing. We're just going to play a little bit more in the middle. Holy crap. Yeah, well, it's just, we're at a minute 24 and the, and the level of bullshit is at a 15 out of 10. First thing you notice is how big of a property it is. It actually feels like... How big of a property a prison is? Oh my God, like we're going to house hundreds of people. Maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand. Let's do it all in one fifty story skyscraper, sixty story What the fuck is wrong with this guy? You need space and fencing and you want to keep it away from a certain What the hell? Yeah. See what they're trying to do, I'm I'm gonna I've had enough of this shit actually. I, I can't deal with him anymore. What they're trying to do is spin that once you're in prison, you lose all rights as a human being. No. You still, look, when Bernardo was in 23-hour lockdown, he got one hour a day in the yard because he was allowed that under, under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. He cannot be locked down 24 hours a day. That's cruel and unusual punishment. He had the worst punishment there was. His cell, very tiny. Uh, it wasn't even, I think it was only about four and a half feet wide by eight feet long. Very small. Okay. He's about six foot three, six foot four, if memory serves. Big man. I met him when I was working at Kingston Penitentiary. Ridiculously charming, unbelievably good looking man. The pictures that you see of him do not do him justice. He's much better looking in person, which is the disturbing part. Now you need to understand something. When you are in prison, you still have certain rights. You have your charter rights that you are protected by. And most prisoners can pretty much recite the charter word for word verbatim because mm. they, they know their lawyers will tell them you have rights under the charter. You have the right to exercise. You have the right to fresh air and sunshine, which is something that a human being has to have. So for this guy to get upset, I can't believe the amount of space. Well, what, what the hell do you think you were going to do with prisoners? Well, some of that space is dedicated to security too. Yeah, you that's need a perimeter. You need 
So I, I'm reading this here from uh, the, the CBC here. Canada's prison service says there's no working hockey rink at an institution where a conservative MP says notorious inmates play, quote, taxpayer-funded serial killer pickup hockey. Mm-hmm. Girl, please. <laughs> Correctional Service Canada says there's currently no functioning hockey rink or tennis court for inmates to use at La Macasse Institution located outside of Montreal. Serial rapist and convicted murderer Paul Bernardo was transferred to the medium security prison last year from the penitentiary in Ontario, where he lived for decades. His move set off a political firestorm for the Liberals as the Tories demanded he be returned to serve out his indeterminate life sentence in a maximum security conditions. And I see uh, some kids here saying, well, he deserves to spend his life in a maximum security prison. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. Yeah. Probably does. But, you know, but at some point you start to get older. You're well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how old Paul Bernardo is today. Um, mm-hmm. I don't care. Older than um, me. Yeah, and um, you know, sometimes they use they need the space in maximum security for other <laughs> yeah. people. There are people that have done bad things since. Oh boy, um, he will be sixty in August of this year. All right. Um, the prison service has said that procedures were followed, and Bernardo had long met long met the criteria to be reclassified as a medium security inmate decisions ottawa says are made at arm's length from politicians frank caputo a conservative mp from british columbia released a video on social media detailing a tour he took of the institution in the video posted sunday caputo said he was angered to learn that the prison provided inmates with a hockey rink and other recreational facilities quote i walked outside and i had a look and i said what's that looks like a hockey rink he recalled in the video it was I'm probably not doing it the way he would do it in the video. I'm probably yeah, adding a couple, well, close enough. A couple of things. Inmates can go and they can get skates and they can play hockey. The Correctional Service said in a media statement that while boards are up around a rink at the institution, there has been no ice for the past two winters. There's currently no functioning hockey rink or tennis court being used by inmates at La Macasa. Spokesman Kevin Antonucci said in an email. It should also be noted that opportunities to participate in recreational activities are not unique to La Macasa and can be found in other institutions. Providing inmates with access to recreational activities promotes safer institutions for those who live and work in our facilities by allowing them to spend time in a productive, controlled, and healthy manner, Antonucci added. Yes, it's also for the benefit of people who work in the incarcerated yes. system. Because if you put them in a place where people are just caged and never even allowed out to get a breath of fresh air or get a little bit of exercise and they have all that pent up energy. Who does it get turned against? Yeah. Well, his nearly seven minute video Caputo discussed how he was provided access to Bernardo's cell while the inmate was away. He said that after a quote, couple of minutes in the space, he turned around to see Bernardo whose likeness was unmistakable. Just seeing him, just seeing him coming eye to eye with him, I had a physical reaction, he said. Even just talking about this brings back memories. Except he didn't, that didn't happen. He needs to put a trigger warning on his own video, it seems. It didn't happen, though. According to Corcan, that never occurred. The Correctional Service confirmed that Caputo and Union representatives visited the prison in early February and that officials granted the MP's request to access Bernardo's cell while the inmate wasn't present. Quote, as this visit was by the MP and union representatives, they are a better place to respond to questions about specific events that occurred, Antonucci said. However, he added, quote, it is our understanding that participants did not interact with Paul Bernardo during their visit. In a response to the Canadian press late Monday, Caputo did not directly address questions about that encounter. He said he wanted to see for himself, quote, how the worst killers like Bernardo are living in more comfortable settings. Uh-huh. So, yeah, really. So they they want they want um, a Saudi prison, I guess, where you get um, you're kept in darkness twenty four hours a day. You are given a bucket to uh, defecate and urinate into. Uh, they hose you down once a month, and you get uh, one meal a day slid through a slot on the wall. Is that what they want? Is that what conservatives want? Look, I I want Paul Bernardo to suffer for the rest of his life. The fact that he's locked up until he dies. I think he's suffering. The man has no freedom. And I've met him. He has no freedom. That's it. He gets a couple hours a day in the yard, and I can guarantee you when he gets his yard time, the prison goes into lockdown. Because when I was in Kingston Penn working there, when they moved him 
at any time that they moved him, when they brought him out for his one hour a day, or when they brought him into the condos for the weekend because his parents used to come to visit him. Yes, because, you know, he had loving parents. Well, when that happened, the whole prison went into lockdown. Like you could have heard a pin drop. Because every prisoner in there wanted to be the guy who greased Paul Bernardo. Because then you move up in the prison hierarchy, the inmate hierarchy. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you did your bit where, KP, and you did what? You greased, oh shit, bro, have a seat. Everybody wanted to grease him because it gives them power in the prison system, in the inmate institution. Trust me, yeah. prison is not a, there's nothing great about it. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there you go. Just, um, they, they just lie. They just lie, but they want you to be afraid. They want you to be afraid that Canada's falling apart, that Justin Trudeau's personally releasing prisoners onto the street, personally giving children fentanyl, personally, you know, anything that you can think of. Yeah, exactly. The, is it, and you know, for people who do the critical thinking thing and know a little bit about civics, I mean, this is on the face immediately is ridiculous, and we laugh. But there are some people who are buying this. There are some people who are buying this. Yeah, unfortunately, there are. Look, at at one point in time, I would have bought into that stuff. It's true, I would have, because I was young and naive. And I believed what people, you know, I believe that politicians would tell the truth. I mean, the lies today are way beyond anything of my childhood. Way beyond anything of my childhood. Yeah. Me too. It's, like I, I, it's just, it's just like astonishing. I, said, I remember spin. I don't remember just outright pulling it out of your ass. Well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> it's they just lie so incessantly, and they're not even good lies. We can disprove them on the spot in front of them, and they still double down. Case in point, why did you uh, admit to, fund, uh, to, to ending deregulation so that the Bell Canada, amongst others, wouldn't have to pay all these regulatory fees? We didn't do that. That was the Liberals. No, you did it. Your party did it. Your party did it with the Bloc Québécois. You did it. Yeah. In the NDP. The Liberals voted against it. No, no, Justin Trudeau. And you're, you're with CP, right? Yeah, you're just another. <sighs> yep. But well, we, we had an example of that the other day. Um, it was uh, Scott Moe, the premier of... Um, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, sorry. <laughs> you wanted to say Saskatoba? <laughs> Jeez, yeah, that I had a brain fart. Going to say a Maylox moment, but no, a brain fart <laughs> over there. It happens. Uh, you got uh, Premier Scott Moe putting this out. Here we go. I'll put it up, Mister Grizzly. I might have to blow it up a bit here. Yeah, blow it up a little bit there, a little bit more, a little bit more. There you go. Perfect. Look at that. Right. That's great. There we go. Okay, please. When Trudeau gave a carbon tax exemption on heating oil to Atlantic Canada, he Stop. called it. Did that happen? No, actually it didn't. That didn't happen. That's a lie. He didn't give a, he gave a carbon tax exemption to heating oil nationwide. Yes, not just Atlantic Canada. The highest concentration is in Atlantic Canada. In Atlantic Canada. Yeah, but exactly. 60% of the houses that use heating oil are outside Atlantic Canada. So mm-hmm. if you live in Saskatchewan right now and mm-hmm. you heat your home with oil, with heating oil, you get that benefit. Yes. It's not applying to you. It doesn't apply only to Atlantic Canada. Continue. He called it relief amid soaring costs of living and the right outcome. When our government does the same by taking the carbon tax off natural gas for Saskatchewan families. Stop. Is that what he did? No. No, he didn't. He did not take the carbon tax off natural gas for Saskatchewan families. He told Sask Energy and anybody else who happens to be collecting the regulatory fee, which actually appears Mm. on your bill, but doesn't appear on your bill when you go to buy food, doesn't appear on your bill 
Mm. Why? He goes, but the ones that apply, he <gasps> says, he didn't take it off. He's just not collecting it. Exactly. Yes. And here's the other difference. The federal government decided it was not collecting the regulatory fee that it itself imposed in order to create another program, which was basically subsidizing heat pumps for free Mm -hmm. as a pilot project first on Atlantic Canada, which results for the people who make the switch over that course of those three years in permanent cost savings because you're moving away from the most expensive way to heat your home and permanent GHG reductions because when you move from heating oil to a heat pump, you go from being a heavy carbon emitting home to a nearly zero carbon carbon emitting home. Whereas the government of Saskatchewan is basically not collecting and vowing to not remit a fee that it itself does not charge. It's not, right? The federal backstop is applying. So here it is, it's like the Premier of Saskatchewan is saying that, hey, federal government, I owe you money, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to charge it. I'm not going to collect it from people that I'm supposed to collect it from, and I'm not going to give it to you, is the same as the federal government saying, you know what, we're going to take, we, we were going to take this money from you, but we're not going to do it, and instead we're going to do this. It's not the same thing. He's deciding for the federal government. It's not the federal government itself deciding to forego. And there's no additional program. And then? The Trudeau government calls it anarchy. Has there ever been a more divisive federal government? All right. You just, um, how many lies were in that statement? Like There were a lot of lies in that statement. Complete and duplicity. Then, Oh God, he's just, he, he, he's absolutely incredible. And then that led to our Minister of Environment, Stephen Gilbo, saying that it was immoral for the Premier to be basically flouting the law. Because this is money that is duly owed to the federal government. And the premier of Saskatchewan at the moment is basically counseling mm-hmm. people in this province to break federal law. Now, Stephen Gilbo said it was immoral for the premier of Saskatchewan to break the carbon price law. But what did Scott Moe pretend he heard? Uh, apparently it's immoral to give Saskatchewan families the same carbon tax break on some heating, home heating that Trudeau gave Atlantic Canada. Okay, By let's way, stop. Is that true? No, no, he gave it to um, the entire country. He gave it, he did give the same carbon tax break on home mm-hmm. eating to people in Saskatchewan as he gave to Atlantic Canada. He literally did the opposite of what Mo is stating mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And then he says, apparently it's immoral to give Saskatchewan families. See, Mo is not doing that. Mo is applying it to every form of fossil fuel, not just heating oil. It's not the same tax break. The one that he's giving, like this, to, to members of to Saskatchewan residents by not collecting the fee is Mm -hmm. not the same tax break. His is larger. And then, says, by the way, the carbon tax exemption for Saskatchewan families was passed unanimously in the Saskatchewan legislature. Big deal. So you all agreed to break the law. Yep. I believe that's called a conspiracy. (laughs) (laughs) When more than one people agree to break, do something that would break the law. Yeah. Isn't that the classic definition of a conspiracy? You're literally com- I mean, don't don't they call that racketeering so uh, so the Vara International border? Just, so, you know, just putting that out there. 
what we're saying that they do they, they lie they literally will just lie they'll just lie they will first lie oh yeah yeah and daniel smith had a tweet like that saying you know Judah and trudeau gave a regional regional based tax credit no he didn't the tax credit applies specifically to the form of heating you're using, not geography. If he had done geography, he would have applied it only to Atlantic Canada and nowhere else across Canada. The break is associated with the type of heating used, mm-hmm. not where you live. It only just so happens that the biggest concentration of people who use that form of heating live in a region of the country. But there are people across the country from coast to coast to coast who use it. That's and correct. They all get the break. And now the Premier of Saskatchewan is going around and saying, well, well, because uh, Stephen Gilbo and Jonathan Wilkinson said, well, Jonathan Wilkinson, our Minister of Natural Resources, said, uh, well, I guess if you're not going to be collecting the tax and remitting the tax to us, then guess we have to kind of cancel the rebate. And then everybody, they're all the conservatives in Saskatchewan are going, well, oh, I don't see why we should remove the rebate. Why would you do that and punish people more? Because the rebate is funded from the money that you, the provinces, collect and remit to the federal government. If you're not remitting the money to the federal government, with what money is the federal government going to give a rebate? Mm-hmm. It's like the provinces send the money that they collect to the federal government. The federal government takes that money, takes 10% off, gives that to institutions like hospitals and schools and stuff like that so that they can green, and then the rest distributes to the people. It's just in order to help them be able to afford to make greener choices and the regulatory fees are on to make less green options more more expensive which provides an incentive for people to make a greener choice it's pretty simple yeah it's not it's not rocket surgery but they're all pretending like they can't understand this yeah, well, all these leaders are not that stupid. This is basically mm-hmm. cosplaying cray or cosplaying dumb for pay and votes. They're yeah. pretending like they can't understand how this program works, and they're telling people that the program works differently than it actually does. It's literally outright lies. Hey, Lola! Oh, that's a oh, that's a lovely puppy. <laughs> Those are big kisses. <laughs> oh, I love it. She, she is so cute. <laughs> She's an alarm clock. She had us both up at 5 a.m. <laughs> she was like booping her snoot on my face and then licking my face. And then she'd go over to Bridget's side of the bed. And I'm like, babe, I think she needs out. Sure enough, she had to, she needed to, uh, you know, relieve herself. Mm-hmm. So she lets us know when she needs out. Usually she'll just go to the door. But she kept trying to wake us up. So then I get up and I look at her and she's at the door bumping her her face against the mirror. I'm like, oh, okay, she needs out. Yeah. She's a good girl. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have problems with this type of behavior. Oh, God, yeah. And it is also, and this is probably a little bit below the belt, but it is not lost on me that this is not Premier Scott Moe's first experience no. with breaking the law. No, 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 no. He he killed a woman. Remember that? He did that. Just saying. Because he's sitting there, and he's sitting there literally saying, Oh my God, I can't believe Gilbo said it's immoral of me to want to try and lower your heating, your heating costs. No. He said it's immoral to commit a crime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're flouting the law. But all he flipped that as an 
as a saint. And listen, it's Scott Mo, Premier Mo, you you you're free to not charge the citizens of your province that fee. But you still need to remit that which would have been charged to the federal government. Now, if you as the premier decide that you want to give citizens a savings and don't want to charge it to them, that's fine. You're entitled to do that. But you're not allowed to withhold the money from the federal government. It still has to come out of the coffers, which means that Saskatchewan or Saskatchewan residents are still paying it anyway. It just yes. becomes a hidden fee. Yeah, exactly. Rather than the one that's up front. So being because you're not charging implicit. it on the bill, but you're still giving the money back to the federal government, and there's still only one taxpayer, which means... You're still paying it. You're still paying it. But if you're not collecting it and not remitting it to the federal government, you are committing a crime. And if you are not collecting it, not remitting it to the federal government, and still expect the damn rebate <laughs> to be coming like this, then you're living in la-la land. And I can understand, but here's the play with this one, right? Because mm -hmm. citizens of Saskatchewan, uh, carbon price, regulatory fee, does make the price of everything go up a little. And they're all saying, well... Yeah, okay, we might not be paying it on you know, our, our electricity and on our gas anymore, but we're still paying it on the food, so we still deserve some of the rebate. Okay, maybe. You'll note that the rebates in Atlantic Canada have all dropped mm -hmm. as a result of the previous decision. So, But they planned, the federal government planned that program, so they planned for the bureaucracy to run it. If the federal government now needs to start calculating what your rebate should be in Saskatchewan because Premier Mo unilaterally decided that, hey, he's not collecting it and not remitted it anymore, well, shouldn't it be Premier Mo who's paying for that bureaucracy to administer it? Hey, I'm not going to respect the law, which means that you federal government now have to do a whole bunch of other work and set up another bureaucracy to create a system specifically for people of Saskatchewan, hey, and you guys foot the bill. Yeah. So Scott Moe right now is asking all of us as Canadians, everyone who doesn't live in Saskatchewan and people live in Saskatchewan, I guess as well too, because we all pay federal taxes to basically fund a new bureaucracy to remit a carbon fee that would be non-inclusive of the fees that he doesn't collect, but inclusive of the other fees that are embedded into the prices So because he's being a petulant child and having a tantrum. But this he wants all of us to Linda, pay for it. This comment from Linda, when the rebate that people expect doesn't come, Mo will tell them that it's the federal government not giving people their money. He's already done, done that. Yeah, which is another lie. He already it is said, you, yeah. Premier Scott Moe, who have denied people their money, and the people of Saskatchewan are paying a carbon tax in the first place because yeah. you, Premier Scott Moe, have decided not to get off your lazy ass and actually do the bare minimum to make sure that there isn't one. But, the, I mean, he already came out and said that. Like, pfft. yep. It's like, so this is like kind of, <laughs> kind of saying, you know, it's like you um, take from your employer mm -hmm. and your employer notices it and implies a consequence. Like, for example, uh, doesn't fire you, but uh, suspends you for a little bit. Mm hmm and decides to suspend you without pay because you stole from the company. And you're out there going, I can't believe they're not giving me a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Dude. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, uh. So they will lie. They were just lie. The lie about prisons. The other lie, the Winnipeg lab. Apparently, yeah. we were making bioweapons there. Chemical warfare. Uh -huh. Well, not chemical warfare, biomedical warfare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Trudeau, even though, as we mentioned uh, yesterday, well, JB mentioned, even though the... Uh, untoward things started happening in 2014 around the time here's the thing FIPA was announced on October 1st 2014 
Mm-hmm. Ten years in ago. 2014, and that's when the breaches of security started yeah. at the lab started. What is more likely that Trudeau, who wasn't even the prime minister at the time, mm. after the fact of being prime minister, opened the went got into time machine, went back in time, and gave authorization to open the doors and roll out the red carpet to officials from the Communist Party of China to come in and just hey window shop and take whatever you want. Well, yeah, of course. So, you know, so. I guess. Or, or that these things started happening under the nose of a previous government mm-hmm. who was negotiating in secret a 31-year deal with China, which they signed in Russia. In secret. We're not making this up, folks. This all happened. Because, and then all of a sudden, companies are being sold to China, and all of a sudden, China has access to our lab. And, and or China's had access to our labs as a condition of them signing the deal. Well, and, and they, they want to blame Trudeau for all the things that they did. Yeah. Now, I have, I want to be clear, I'm not saying that Stephen Harper, in exchange, mm-hmm. or as a condition to get FIPA signed, no, had no. to give the people of China that deal, and that he did it. We're not saying What's more likely? Yes. There's no accusation. We're not saying that at all. It's just the likelihood is there. The likelihood is there. Simple as that. It's like, because there's a pretty much 0% chance that Trudeau went back in time, declared himself prime minister, and then opened up the lab. You know, if he could do that, he'd be, well, I mean, well, look, according to, according to Pierre Polyev, he controls everything on earth but he controls nothing right because you know global inflation is a justin trudeau creation and we didn't have it before justin trudeau but global reduction in inflation is not no that's not him no 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 and and when things go down when you know when prices go down and wages go up nothing to do with him again but But if prices go up and wages go down that's his fault yeah when housing doubles or quadruples like it did under his government when he was part of the conservative government when Stephen Harper was the prime minister, when housing prices quadrupled during his tenure, that was that Justin Trudeau's fault as well. I I can't remember if he tried to blame that on Trudeau or uh, no, that didn't happen according to him. It didn't happen. No, because prices only started going up in 2015. Right. Yes. Housing has never increased in price in this country ever before in history until Justin Trudeau became prime minister in 2015. Never doubled before. Never. No, never. You you know how ridiculous that sounds? Here's the thing, though. This is the lie they're trying to spin you. This is what they're trying to convince people. And the worst part of it is some people believe it. It, 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 you know, it it just, it's the Mark Twain uh, quotation. Never argue with an idiot. They will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Mm-hmm. Also, never argue with an idiot because people watching you argue might not be able to tell the difference. Yeah, well, that's the other thing, too. <laughs> okay, which one of these two is the idiot? Yeah. The actual idiot or the person choosing to argue with the idiot? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, yikes. <laughs> and listen. It's going to be this. All I mean, it, it has been this for all the longest time, right? They're going to raise the GST. They're going to charge a tax on your truck. They're going to, you know, uh, oh, that, that the put fifty percent capital capital gains on the sale of your house. All those things that they said that the liberals had plans to do, like this, that never materialized. That the liberals never even whispered about. Mm. That they keep on saying will happen because we won't have vaccines till twenty thirty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. The, the luxury truck li- tax. I remember yeah. when that 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 story came out. Oh, they're gonna we're gonna start charging extra tax on trucks. And I go, let me look into this because my dad was you know upset yeah. about it. He read it in the paper. I said, let me look into it and get back to you. So I looked into it and I got back to him and I go, actually, Dad, what they forgot to mention in that article in the newspaper that is was that this plan came under the Stephen Harper government and it was for luxury vehicles that cost a hundred thousand dollars or more. And he went. Oh, what? I go, yeah, they, they conveniently left that part out. 
also under the Trudeau government, I think it was $120,000 because it had been a number of years since that uh, was first put into play. And, you know, costs of things have increased and this and that and the other thing. So I'm like, if you can afford a $120,000 truck, you can probably afford the luxury gas tax for it as well. Yeah. And, and as soon as I told my dad that he got, he was livid. He's like, so they're lying to us, to yeah. our faces. I go, dad, that's the you're, reason I have a show. That's the reason Douglas and I do this every morning. Not only are they lying to you, you're paying them to lie. Yeah. To that's you. the worst part. It's all taxpayer funded. So whether you like it or not, we're paying Pierre Polyev's salary. He's the worst goddamn employee I've ever had. And we'll fire his ass. Oh yeah, we have to wait until 2025. Yeah. And remember, a significant portion of political donations are funded by you. Because I think it's like 60% of them or something like that get the political donation tax credit. Correct. That's funded by you. When these people run in elections and lie, mm. all candidates that get at least 5% of the vote have a portion of their expenses refunded to them by Elections Canada. You pay for those lies too. When Skippy puts out those expense reports, well, when the Parliament puts out those expense reports every quarter, and we see how much more that the conservatives are spending to run their operations than the liberals are, we're all paying that. They're lying to us on our time and on our dime. Mm -hmm. And he's living rent free while he's doing it. It's like, I just, some days, I literally want to, want to, will not do, and not advocating violence. Mm -hmm. Literally line them all up and just run. You know, you know what it is? It's the scene from Slapshot when they're all on the bench leaning over and you skate by with your stick up and smack them all in the face. That's what you want to do. You don't do it. Stop. You're allowed to want to do it. You don't do it. Stop lying to me and making me pay for it. Stop it's interfering like, with my right to cast a fully informed vote. Stop. Stop lying to us. That's the thing that I just <clears throat> cannot tolerate anymore. I can tolerate a lot of stuff. I cannot tolerate a liar. Lie on your own damn dime. <laughs> well, that's the worst. It's like, I have to pay for this shit? I have to pay for this. To be gaslighted. I did see something funny about gaslighting yesterday. Okay. And I'm going to share it with you now. Okay. Somebody wrote on online, I saw this and I, I chuckled because he says, if I hear somebody say gaslighting one more time, I'm going to quit the internet forever. And the first response was, and it's almost never said online, gaslighting really doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in your head. It really doesn't happen. <laughs> gaslit him on the gaslighting oh, man. That's, that's good lovely. right that's good that, that, that's good that's good um speaking of gaslighters donald trump uh yesterday <laughs> uh, yesterday was da -da 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 -da, super tuesday oh yeah super tuesday. <laughs> look what's that up in the sky it's a bird it's a plane no it's super tuesday in the United States, where I think uh, for both parties, uh, 15 states and one territory were voting. Uh, they may not be the same states, though, because the uh, Democrats uh, flipped their order or uh, switched up their order. Uh, but some interesting developments, again, as predicted, pretty much Biden won everything and Trump won everything. But there was an exception in both cases. Nikki Haley won Vermont. Yes. Now making her the first Republican woman to win because she won DC, which is technically not a state. So mm -hmm. no, it's she not. Was the first, she no. was first the first one to run a to win a primary. Now she's the first one to win an actual state in a primary to go with it. Um, now, of course, this is not going to change anything about Trump being the inevitable, but. 
does poke a little hole in his narrative that everybody loves Trump and his support is way down because you know every percentage point Nikki Haley gets is a percentage point of voters that probably care enough to vote in a primary but care enough to sit out of voting for Trump in a general election. So uh, his support is not as widespread as he would like everybody to believe that it is. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Joe Biden won everywhere except for the territory of American Samoa. And he lost to some mm. guy there who is named Jason Palmer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't know it, it, pretty much exactly. <laughs> He's going like, who is Jason Palmer? Who is Jason Palmer? So CNN has it like this. It says, President Joe Biden was handed his first defeat so far in the Democratic presidential primary by a man who very few knew before Tuesday night, venture capitalist Jason Palmer. The little-known candidate from Baltimore won the American Samoa Dis uh, Democratic nomination contest. While Palmer won in the tiny U.S. territory where fewer than 100 people participate in the caucus, it will not slow Biden's commanding march to the Democratic nomination. Honored to announce my victory in the American Samoa presidential primary. Thank you to the incredible community for your support. This win is a testament to the power of our voices. Together we can rebuild the American dream and shape a brighter future for all, Palmer said in a post on X in his 15 minutes of fame. Mm. In which he probably already has maybe seven left. <laughs> a Palmer campaign official told CNN, can the CNN that the candidate had three full-time campaign staffers on the ground but did not visit the island himself instead appearing virtually at events. Palmer told CNN's Laura Coates in an interview early he was surprised by his Tuesday win. I'm just proud to say my local team did a fantastic job, and I think our message really resonated about focusing on education, health care, and climate change. While he lauded Biden for his, quote, tremendous service, Palmer called on the president to, quote, pass the torch to the next generation of Americans and said he'll continue his presidential campaign. He's a 52-year-old guy, venture capitalist, um, and that's pretty much all we know about him. American <laughs> Samoa is a place I'd really like to go and visit, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'd really like to go visit American Samoa. It, it, mm -hmm. I've read wonderful things about the place. It's about a, it's a small island, 57,000 people live there, um, and it's super chill. Uh, hmm. I watched a film recently about it, uh, and it's a, a true story. It's called uh, Next Goal Wins or First Goal Wins or something. I can't remember the exact title. Um, Michael oh, Fassbender is in it. That was, yeah, the soccer thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had to, yes. I think they had never scored a goal or something. That's correct, yeah. Right. They, they had the worst defeat in the history of international soccer when they lost to Australia 31-0. Yeah. What, what is left out of that part of the story though. They tell you in the film, they go, well, they, he's, they scored 31 goals on me. He goes, yeah, but you stopped 61 shots. So he had 92 shots in a soccer match. Yeah. That is absolutely unheard of. Yes. So to stop 61, that's incredible goalkeeping. Against it's, Australia. It's, against Australia. Who, <laughs> you know, not, not good. a powerhouse, but they're always there. Whereas yes. Team Canada has been in the World Cup, uh, the men's World Cup, twice. Yeah, twice. Twice. Once, just because somebody else was disqualified. So, okay, you guys can come on in. And then this year they earned it and they scored a goal. And and then, of course, James Duthie made the mistake of, this is the biggest moment in Canadian soccer in history. No, no, James, James. Canadian men's soccer, not Canadian soccer. Because you're sitting right next to a woman on your panel who won a gold medal at the Olympics yep. in soccer. Yep. Whereas Australia has qualified for the World Cup six times in 1974, then in 2006, and the four tournaments since. Yeah. So basically so, the last five in a row. They're a much better soccer team, uh, soccer nation than we are, and they're not nearly as big as we are. But, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Go Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Well, I mean, in, you know, in the World Cup, if, you know, Team Canada, well, women, I'm, I'm always turned for, you know, our women are always in, in the mix. When it comes to Men's World Cup, uh, I usually, uh, Ireland, uh, Australia, then England, uh, then France. And then after that, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I just hope for a good match. Like well, the since we're talking last about World Cup, which was a thrilling final. If you're going to watch a World Cup final, that was the one to watch.
Yeah. It really yeah, was. That was good. Yeah. I and I think it got a lot of people yeah. interested in the sport because it was the best World Cup final I've ever seen. And of course, the best part is yep. the, the best player in the history of the game, Lionel Messi, won his World Cup title. So he can retire now, yeah. which he, he's effectively retired by playing in Miami, where he earns way more money in Miami because he got 100% of his uh, jersey sales, <laughs> as opposed to if he had moved his family to Saudi Arabia, where his wife and children would not have had a good quality of life. That Anyway, you know, I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. Since we're talking soccer, I'll just throw this in there, but to get back to the, the primary thing. Um, tonight at uh, 10.15 Eastern, uh, Canada is playing the USA. Oh, okay. At the North uh, for the Concacaf uh, Gold Cup to see who is the the best in the the I guess the Americas. Technically, it's supposed to be North America, but they they invited a couple of teams from South America uh, as well uh, to participate in that one. So that's the semifinal match, and uh, the Canadian men's under twenty team went to three and zero and did not allow a goal in qualification. Uh, for um, the CONCACAF championship for the under 20s, uh, which will be happening uh, in July of this year. So, uh, congratulations. Uh, well done. Well done. Our, our, junior, our juniors are doing well as well. Uh, but to get back to the primaries, get ready, Kits and Cubs, to see tons of articles stating that that win in American Samoa. Yeah by a guy who is not Joe, Joe Biden is proof of proof yeah. that he's not the right man for the job and Americans are banning him, but that Nikki Haley won DC and Vermont an actual state. Yeah. Well, and the funny thing is that says nothing about how Republicans feel about well, Donald Trump. If you look at American Samoa, I don't even believe they have the voting rights in that. It's a protectorate. It's, it's complicated yeah. the way it works. They're kind of like DC, yeah, right? It's it's complicated yeah. uh, the the way their voting yeah. rights work in that in that uh, part of the world. It's uh, they they don't have full citizenship. They can vote in primaries. Yeah, but yeah. Exactly. They they can't vote in a general election, and they don't have citizenship, but they're recognized as Americans. But uh, unlike Puerto Rico, where it's yeah, I, I don't fully get it. It, well, it. it changes among the territories and protectorates right. too. There are different standards. Like not one universal. That's standard. the other thing, right? So yeah, so I was like, as a Canadian. As as a Canadian, I think I only found out, you know, maybe fifteen years ago when I finally like sat down and watched one of those nights that you know when the delegates show up and says we are from no 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 we pretty you know the, I'm from Idaho the something something state and we give our and then they say something about their mm -hmm. state like for about like thirty seconds and we give our thirty four votes to so and so so and so like this and then all of a sudden it's like American Samoa yeah the U.S. Virgin Islands Puerto Rico mm -hmm. really oh okay. <laughs> That's when I learned <laughs> that, that the, they vote. Uh, they vote in the primaries, but uh, but not all of them yeah, exactly have votes. And even like Washington D.C., the rep, like they have a representative, I think, in the House, but not in That's the right. Senate. And and yeah, it's it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. The the one thing we do really well here in Canada mm -hmm. is have a universal system. Yeah. When it comes like to the ballot, how you vote, because like, right, it's all the states in the United States. That's how we got the hanging chads thing back in the day, because everybody had a different ballot and you fill it in a different way. And it's like, it, it's like you're a damn country. Can you not have one single way of voting oh, that's uniform all across the country? Not. Because there, there's, there is like a U.S. Elections Commission, but they're nothing like Elections Canada. So, ah. Uh, all right, so that's primary news. So just like we're never going to hear the end of uh, Jamil Giovanni having won, blah, 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 here, you know, and it's, uh, they're all saying, like, it sends a strong message and strong so, like, A rock painted blue would have won in that writing. A writing that was held for 24 years by the conservatives remained conservative. The vote share increased by 10%, yes, which is interesting based on the general but in a by-election that had abysmally low turnout, even by by-election yeah. standards. Yeah. Not sure that's a strong that's not message. not a good message at all. Well, it might be a good message for conservatives, but it ain't a strong one. Well, 
And again, politics 101, right? It's like, we don't take the result of a by-election and start extrapolating, especially one midterm. Just like the by-election wins provincially in Newfoundland and Labrador. A lot of people want to turn around and say, oh my God, they flipped a seat. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice, but not sure that means anything for the federal one. Well, was it, uh, I guess on Monday, Taylor Swift encouraged her 282 million followers on Instagram, I think it was, to vote in Super Tuesday. So I'm waiting for the articles to come out sometime today. Uh, she rigged the she, vote. Yeah, yeah. She told you to vote for that. No, all she said was vote. What do we say on this show all the time? Vote. Vote, vote for the best candidate to represent you in your writing. That's it. And don't vote for no. asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> we won't tell you how to vote. We will just tell you not to, not to vote, don't for, vote for an asshole. <laughs> vote for the best candidate to represent you in your writing. Because remember that representative represents you your next door neighbor the guy down the street that homeless person over there who who, who yeah yep. that because that, they're going to stay in a local shelter in your neighborhood yeah that you're voting for that yep. person too ah man a uh, little uh, another little bit of news uh, about the united states um it seems that the next week of primaries will be georgia mississippi and washington state uh but in california they were determining who would get to run for the Senate seats. And in California, that was a big deal because for the, the, the Democrats, um, Katie Porter, the lady with the whiteboard who doesn't take any oh, guff. Oh, I love Katie Porter. Yeah, was in the running to get the nomination. Barbara Lee, who I believe was the one uh, U.S. Uh, person who voted against going to Iraq. I might be wrong. That might be Barbara Box. I don't remember. Um, but a long time, um, very, 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 very well known within the circles and very respected. But uh, she, but she's she's a U.S. U.S. representative. Like she's in the House uh, House of Representatives, sitting already. And Adam Schiff, who did that great job during um, mm -hmm. the the impeachment. So them three were running to be the Democratic nominee for the Senate seat that's been vacated by Dianne Feinstein. Now that's a race. And Adam Schiff emerged on top. So he will be the, the Democratic candidate. Everybody was wondering that because the, you know, other than the actual Super Tuesday, that was the big story who was going to be the Democratic nominee for California. So it will be Adam Schiff. And um, listen, I really, 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 really don't think that they could have gone wrong with either of the three in this case. Mm. Right? Because Adam Schiff is, he impressed. Oh, yes. Right, during that time. Uh, Barbara Lee uh, voted against the war going, yes. she It wasn't to going into Iraq, sorry. She voted against uh, giving the president a broad open-end authorization to go into war into Afghanistan. So she has political discernment. History and time have borne out. Mm. And then Katie Porter is just freaking fantastic. Cassie's comment, Adam Schiff so, has some trouble with truth on some issues. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, yep. He does. No, look, no politician. Uh, across any plat uh, any political party we're ever going to 100 percent see eye to eye on uh, eye to eye with i should say it's just it's it just doesn't work it's a simple matter of fact um and yes he does and the truth which is lamentable but what can we do about it it's yep. the devil you know versus the devil you don't uh, uh, in other news that's important, uh, if you happen to be Ukrainian, can, well, I shouldn't say Ukrainian-Canadian, if you happen to be a Ukrainian in Canada, mm -hmm. as a result of what's going on right now in Ukraine, a lot of Putler's invasion of your country, or if you happen to know somebody who's there, 
Uh, it is very, 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 very important that they know that the Canada visa, entry visa program, the special one, the emergency one, is about to end. I think, believe it ends at the end of this month, and that everybody who is in Canada currently needs to apply for an extension, and they can have their visas extended until March 31st, uh, 2027. Right, But they need to file that in before the end of the month to make sure because it will become much, much harder to do so. There are already over 200,000 Ukrainians who are living in Canada as a result of that uh, special emergency measure. But uh, so like I said, if you happen to be aware of anyone, please do make sure that they file their paperwork in to, to get their extensions because um, uh, I don't believe it's time to go back yet. All right, and for a certain number of them, uh, people who uh, who came under that program who already had family living in Canada, there is a special program for them to uh, apply for full citizenship if they would like to do that. Uh, so please let them know if they're looking at that to also get their paperwork and uh, started on that. But for the visa, very 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 important because that make make it difficult to stay in Canada beyond March of this year or create a whole bunch of extra bureaucracy to try to extend yourself afterwards mm. because then they would be making special exceptions. I've got some tea so for please, you. Uh, look at that. I've Ooh, got some tea. tea. Yeah. I like tea. You, know you do. This is why I'm going to share it with you. Check this out. So Ooh. this is uh, Frank Caputo. We started the show off with Frank Caputo and his lies. Here's yes. the hockey rink for serial killers that the Trudeau government says doesn't exist. Uh-huh. Let's just... Uh, they didn't say it They never exist. said that. They said it wasn't right. right. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. There's no ice. It's paved. It's ball hockey. Don Darling, <laughs> it's hard to believe this is acceptable behavior from an MP who billed taxpayers over $700,000 in expenses in 12 months and was paid an additional $190,000 salary plus benefits and pension. Stop the rage farming and deliver actual outcomes, please. Salaries, travel, hospitality, contracts. This is all over the course of a year. Seven hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Once more into the breach, shall we? Holy crap on a cracker. <laughs> How do you spend that much? How does one person spend that much? That's almost as much as Skippy. Like, how, how, like, how, why, what, like, why, what, what are you spending it on? Seven, dude, yeah. I'd like a little investigation. Yeah, that's 700,000 for cam loops. What, 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 like, I, it's okay. So, uh, salaries, uh, let's see, 79, 67, 138, 71, 108. Travel, 13,800, uh, 52,000, 42,000, 16,000, 48,000. Hospitality. Hospitality is actually reasonable. 380, 718, 608, 296, 817. That's actually reasonable. Hmm. You know, I mean, you, you take out the hospital. That's, that's not outrageous. Contracts. 28, 23, 37, 20, 28. So, but like his, it's, it's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> get my call. Are the strippers under salaries? <laughs> Jeez. Dude. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Um, speaking of expenses, by the way, uh, that whole um, bit of money, for arrive can that went to that employee of D and D mm. his company mm. Dalian. Um, apparently there is the, um, the something called open Canada.ca where you can go and look, and look up companies and see, uh, how much money they got in contracts. Cause we told you about that article in the CBC that said, you know, there was a conservative MP, uh, that, uh, asked for, um, somebody to do the research for him and, it was discovered that uh, liberals had given about $200 million in contracts to this company. And we asked about, well, what happened before 1995? And they looked at it and they said, a search of the database shows that uh, this other company 
was getting contracts, some of them up to $2 million at a time from the previous government. Now, we thought it was under a different name. Mm -hmm. Dalian Enterprises has existed throughout the entire reign. The first instance of Dalian Enterprises getting a contract is 2004. Mm. So I don't know if uh, Cordell is yet another company or how it works because we, I was under the impression that Cordell was Cordell up until 2014 and then it switched to Dalian. <clears throat> But I went and looked in the database. Dalian has gotten contracts since 2004. Wow. So that means the entire time that the Harper Conservatives were there, and I was try trying to do the math and trying to add up how much. Problem is, is that there were three, about 350 entries in the database wow. for contracts going to Dalian Enterprises from the Conservatives during the time that they were in power. And it seems that most of them because they were in power from uh, February 2006, mm -hmm. I believe it was, till November or something. Yeah, November 2015. I got to 2010, and there were still probably 200 contracts, at least over 200 contracts for me to still wow. enter because I was going into Excel and I was writing the date and the, the amount to try and get the total amount because the people at CBC didn't do right. that work. They just said some contracts went up to 2 million. Some contracts were above 2 million because I saw one of them for $2.3 okay. million. So it wasn't up to, some of them were more. Um, at least one of them was more, I should say, because I haven't gotten through all of them. But I got to 2010 and I was already at $16 million with the bulk of the contracts to that company yet to come in the last five years of Harper's Bending. So I'm not sure how much they sent their way at all in total. But in the first four and a half years, it was about 16 million. And then the number of contracts really seemed to yeah. pick up. So, you know, they... Now, some of these contracts are like only for $10,000, $12,000, but some of them can be up. Like I said, there was one of them was 2.3 million. And I'm looking at the entries and sometimes, and this is all the contracts from all the departments, right. right? There are days, there are certain days, there are four different entries in the same day <laughs> for amounts wow. going to this, this company. So they're all out there saying, oh my God, it's terrible, it's terrible. It's like, yeah, you did it too for the entirety of your mandate. Wow. Maybe it's because it's allowed. You think? But they're trying to make a big well, scandal. Well, they're trying it. to paint it, you know, as Trudeau's problem, and they, they neglected to mention the fact that the guy was a PPC candidate, which is the furthest thing from liberal that you could possibly imagine. And probably, at the time, of Harper's mm -hmm. tenure, mm -hmm. When there wasn't a PPC, yeah. probably a conservative, probably quite willing to be most a conservative likely. candidate, maybe even a conservative. Most donor. likely. We don't know, but most likely. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you go from liberal to PPC. <laughs> They're kind of, you know, diametrically opposed to one another. <laughs> so, yeah, just a, just a little in interesting tidbit of information because when i read the article and they said oh but they got some contracts well how many contracts i mean if you're saying liberals up to 200 million why didn't they tell us how much now the conservative mp filed something to there there's some people in the house of commons that you can ask to do research for you uh for certain things and they were they went in and they added them all up but cbc didn't do the equivalent exercise to add them all up to find the total so um I'm hoping to do that uh, over time, enter, enter all of it. But uh, I did a, I think there was like 35 pages on, on the screen of entry or 36 wow. pages that included that. And I got about 11 So we'll, before I got bored and tired and wanted to move on to something else because it's mind. And I was basically doing data entry, scanning them, writing the date, writing the not writing the date. It's writing. mind numbing work. I know I've, I've had to do hundreds of spreadsheets over the course of my career, well, thousands of spreadsheets. Who am I kidding? And yeah, it can be mind numbing. And here's the other thing. When you're staring at them, 
So some people, when they do a spreadsheet, it's all just white background and that's it. I, I tend to divide up each column and each line into different colors. So it's easier for me mm -hmm. visually to, to discern what I'm looking at. Otherwise, it all just starts to look the same after a little while. But, you know, if I each line is a different color and if a column has something specific about it, I highlight that. So it's easier to read that way. I, it's, I find it's much easier to read, but it also keeps the mind busy. Because, as you know, spreadsheets can be mind-numbingly boring. Mm -hmm. I wish I, I don't know the website off the top of my head from Elections Canada because I would like to go in. If somebody knows it, uh, happens to know it, or if somebody knows how, how to do it. But I'll, I'll try and find out. But I was trying to hopefully, while we were doing the show, look up David Yao's name and see if he ever actually made a political mm -hmm. donation. Yeah, there's a way to do it. Because again, if I was a journalist, I would be adding up those numbers, how much money, and I would be looking, hey, you know, if he ran for the PPC, did he maybe donate to the to the party? Well, very good possibility of that. You never know. Um, another little bit of news that Canadians should be informed about, uh, it seems because with the whole Israel-Palestine thing, uh, the government of Canada had suspended its contributions, its funding to uh, UNRWA, um, which I believe is a United Nations organization. I can't remember what it is. Again, um, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine, I believe. Yes. Uh, after it had been found out that there were a certain number of employees there who may have provided some assistance in some way as to what happened on October 7th in Israel. And uh, the UN was doing an investigation on that, and I believe the last time we had talked about it, uh, there was 13 people that had uh, been identified, and I believe that uh, 11 had been fired, and they were still looking into two others at the time to see if they, could, uh, if they actually had done something or not. It seems that the government of Canada has decided that they will resume their funding to the relief agency. Um, relatively soon um i don't not sure as of as of when they will start making them uh again but uh they will be uh giving uh restoring the funding i believe it's about 25 million dollars uh that we give to them so that they can uh, keep on providing relief to people in palestine who we are hearing now on the news um are suffering from starvation and malnutrition and that there are even some people that are now starting to die. Yes, as a result of it. So, so um, that. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Kit Michael makes a good point. I heard that this morning. But did we really withhold anything with our next payment? Not due until April. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. Yeah, probably not. Unless there were some installments uh, having to go go along the way. Um, that maybe got delayed a bit, but uh, other countries had also announced that they were suspending uh, their payments. So I'm guessing we might be the first and other countries might start uh, joining suit uh, soon enough. But it seems that in terms of the government of Canada, uh, they are satisfied with the investigation that took place and with the measures that have uh, taken place to try to correct and root out the problem and are ready to uh, start making their contributions once again. So we'll see how that goes out. That will probably provoke uh, some uh, howling from the conservatives who have gone all in on the Israel side uh, on this uh, without any nuance whatsoever. Whatsoever. Um, oh, what, Michael, the internal investigation has been turned over to funding countries. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's good to know. Um, from what I was just hearing on the, the CBC uh, news this morning, that it seems that that was the rationale that, uh, that Hussein will, will, will give, is that the, the, at least the initial investigations and measures that have been taken uh, are enough to satisfy Canada that uh, things are on the right track and that uh, things are being done at UNRWA to get uh, the organization back in shape. But we will see. Um, Yep, the, both both can be true at the same time. There could be an internal investigation that's turned over to funding countries for other things, and uh, the government of Canada being satisfied that that's that because of that's going to be happening, that we can uh, return the money. 
So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not all that up because it was just a little snippet that I heard on the on the radio that the funding was coming coming back, and uh, that's obviously going to create some people to be going all all over. Yes. I, like I'm expecting to see treat, uh, tweets from uh, Rupa uh, today, uh, going, "Oh my God, I can't believe we're doing this." But uh, yeah, we will get uh, get more details because we're we're following this one because it, it, it is a big of a big deal, bit of a big deal. Uh, the final thing that I have for you this morning here has to do with the dental program. It seems that there might have been some lack of clarity with regard to the eligibility for seniors uh, for the dental plan, particularly seniors who purchased insurance themselves or who opted out of pension programs that they can't rejoin. Uh, according to the CBC, the federal government has posted updated information online on who is eligible for Canada's national dental care program. And I will uh, provide you the link to where that information is, Mr. Grizzly, so you can share it in the chat with people who uh, may be, because we might have some listeners who are looking to qualify for the program, uh, for the program, so that they can have their direct mm. link. Uh, the additional details come after seniors raised concerns about whether their existing private dental insurance plans disqualified them from the public plan. A spokesperson for Health Canada told CBC News that people who purchased private dental insurance plans on their own will qualify for the national program, but only after their existing private policies are no longer in effect. Those with access to private dental coverage through their work or professional organizations remain ineligible for the Canada Canadian Dental Care Plan. They're ineligible even if they decided to opt out of their private insurance, haven't made a claim, or have to pay a premium, the website says. Ottawa has now added an exception for retirees who decided not to sign up for private dental insurance offered through their pension plans. If they opted out of those dental plans before December 11th, 2023, and aren't allowed to opt back in, they will qualify for the national program. The spokesperson for Health Canada told CBC News its website was updated Monday. And so if you click that link, you will be getting the updated information. Health Minister Mark Harlan said his department looked at situations where retirees had chosen to opt out of their pension or dental plans before the national program was announced. Quote, that put a few people in limbo where there was a question mark about whether or not they were going to get their coverage. We've said that's, we've said no, that's fair. That person should be able to get the coverage, Holland said Tuesday during a funding announcement in Iqaluit. And uh, the article goes on to say that uh, at least 1 million Canadians have signed up so far for the program. Uh, and uh, we're still at the point, I believe, we, yeah, because the the, the, the the portal's not ready for May, so we're still at the point in the system where we're sending letters specifically to seniors who might qualify and telling them that they should. Uh, according to the article, Ottawa has been sending letters to eligible individuals, inviting them to apply starting with the oldest first and March eligibility opened to seniors 70 and older. So, there's basically 1 million Canadians 70 and mm -hmm. older who have applied for coverage. When it was announced, we were wondering how many seniors would really be able to take advantage of this. And then we found out that it also covers dentures and other types of services. Well, you know, I, I have dental coverage under my employer. It's, it's not enough to get anything <laughs> substantial done. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. It's it's not. It's it isn't. Um, but uh, when the day comes that I am no longer working, because you know, eventually I won't be working <laughs> for an employer. I mean, I'll continue to do this, and hopefully we can you know earn money at this. But uh, the the day will come when I will no longer be working for an employer, and I will no longer have a plan because I know that with my employer, because we are very private sector, profit motivated. And uh, they'll tell us about the wonderful year they just had, how we just had record profits and this, that, the other thing. And I'm like, great, can I have a cola raise? At least get me up to the cost of living? No, that's not going to happen. So that means when I retire, I can't stay under my health care coverage. It's, it's gone. It, when I retire, it goes with me. And my pension is just uh, my RSPs, my deferred profit sharing program, OAS, CPP, and GIS. That's it. Mm. So... Yeah. The CPP mm. is not a tax. It's a retirement plan for those of us who don't have anything else. Right. Exactly. 
All right, uh, Mr. Grizzly, that's all I have, unless you have something else for the kids today. I have I have one simple thing here I want to read out to you, um, because okay. some of you may be familiar with um, uh, a, a new beer tax that might be coming soon, I believe, on April 1st. Mm. Yeah, so the conservatives are telling you your beer is going up 4.7%. That's not actually true. April 1st, 2023, the federal excise tax on beer over 2.5% alcohol by volume equals $35.52 per hectoliter. April 1st, 2024, federal excise tax on beer over 2.5% alcohol by volume is $37.19 per hectoliter. A hectoliter is 100 liters. The average can of beer is 355 milliliters, which means there are 281.7 beer per hectoliter. The excise tax in 2023 per 355 milliliter can of beer was 12.6 cents. The excise tax in 2024 per 355 milliliter can of beer will be 13.2 cents. The increase in the excise tax per can of beer on April 1st is an additional 0.6 cents. Beer producers, retailers, and pubs are pushing this as a disaster as they plan to increase their prices significantly on April 1st and blame the government. None of the proponents against this excise, automatic index to inflation tax, will show the math on how much the tax is going up in real terms. In other words, they are lying by omission and have plans to gouge you more on April 1st and blame government. This is the same tactics they use to cover for Loblaws and other retailers on inflation inflation for groceries as their profits soared. So yeah, you're, you're, the, the cons are lying to you once again. It's 0. 0.6. It's not even a penny for a can of beer. Not even a penny. Jeez. Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> and, oh, oh, by the way, so, when you so return little... the can, you get a dime back. So. Yeah. So they're literally saying the 0.6 cents on per can of beer, an extra 4.3 cents <laughs> per liter, yeah. uh, per liter yeah. on on carbon is yeah, what's going to make the um, difference between being able to afford food or not. Yeah. 0.6 cents on a can of beer. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Murphy. I know. It's, it's it's absurd to a level that I just don't understand. Oh my god! It's not even a penny. It's not even a penny. See, I'm sitting here like like I can I get the game, right? It's politics, and I do not understand why it's not all over the place. It's zero point six cents a can. It's like literally running around setting your hair on fire. And this Lynn's got a point here. 0.6 seconds tax will be $2 increase at the bar. Capitalism math. <sighs> Just, uh, I mean, they, here's the thing. They get this worked up for 0.6 cents on a can of beer. Yeah. But they can't get this worked up. About your insurance, you not being able to get home insurance. Which is a thing right now in this country. There are insurance companies that will not insure your home. Tabby G was uh, mentioning something on the, on the chat yesterday about how in Quebec there was somehow some home, homes that were located in a, in a floodplain and that, uh, yep, no more. Yeah, you can't get insurance, period. Sorry, not happening. So they'll have to come up with a provincial program, like in California, where insurance companies are just backing out. They'll have to come up with a state-run program because you can't build a house. You cannot get a mortgage if you cannot insure your home, period. And no, no bank will loan you the money. You'll have to come up with all the money on your own. And who can afford to do that, please? Please tell me. Yeah. Uh, three little tidbits before we go, because I just uh, went on the CBC Politics site. It appears that there are three public opinion surveys that have come up in the most recent time that state that a growing number of Canadians want more money to actually be spent on defense. A larger share of Canadians, 29%, are choosing that military, or sorry, the Angus Reid Institute released new data saying that 29% of Canadians are choosing military preparedness and the country's place on the world as their top political priority. Almost a decade ago, that figure was 12%. Um, so it seems that uh, with regard to uh, Trump making some statements lately that uh, 
he would uh, encourage Russia to do what they want with countries that uh, don't put their full 2%, and Donald Trump wants to make that 4% if he were to be president uh, again to, um, uh, to make the full NATO commitment. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, Skippy has been all out saying that uh, conservatives will make sure that the military is well equipped, but he hasn't actually pledged to meet 2% uh, either. Uh, the Polaris, yeah, Polaris Strategic Insights also had a poll and said that uh, 34% of Canadians support increased defense spending, and uh, but with 43% saying that Trump's threats shouldn't require an increase in defense spending. And then uh, ECOS is the other poll. And uh, when they asked if the defense budget should be increased, 66% of those surveyed said that more dollars should be going in with only 18% favoring a reduction. So that's some important news because you're probably going to hear a lot about uh, defense spending. In uh, the other tidbit, it seems that Rebel, well, they call themselves Rebel News, but Rebel, we swear under oath that we are not news. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is suing the RCMP, alleging a pattern of intimidation and exclusion because of that whole thing that happened with David Menzies over there. This is Rebel News, and one of its media personalities, David Menzies, are taking the RCMP to court, accusing the federal police force of engaging, quote, in a pattern of intimidation and exclusion. The lawsuit, which is also directed at the York Regional Police and the Attorney General of Canada, stems from Menzies' high-profile arrest in January. We all saw the video. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, they go to describe what happened in the video. And then, uh, according to the statement of claim, York police drove Menzies to an empty parking lot several blocks from the event venue and told him he was not being charged. The claim says he was then told that, according to the terms of the Trespass to Property Act, he would not be allowed to return to the venue. The statement of claim said that, pr said that, pr that prevented Menzies from doing his job and talking to attendees. The document also alleges RCMP officers assaulted Menzies in 2020 when he tried to ask Prime Minister Justin Trudeau a question about the government's response to COVID-19 and shot another rebel news personality with a riot-suppressing gun during the 2022 convoy protest in Ottawa. Rebel News has taken the RCMP to court separately in both of those matters and is asking for donations, of course, mm. to cover its legal costs. So they're basically using the judicial system as a PR opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Not so a surprise. That's going on. I will be very surprised if they win that case. I'd be even actually be surprised if the court decides to hear it. But if the court decides to hear it, it will probably be able to issue a precedent ruling saying, um, yeah, that does not constitute assault. <laughs> and then finally, it seems that there is another conservative nomination race. We talked about the one for Arpand Kanna. Well, that was actually his, his by-election. Uh, but the nomination race for him to be the candidate seemed to have been influenced by the government of India. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems that there's another one. There's a uh, there was a, a nomination race for the Conservatives in the electoral district of I cannot find it off the top of my head. I am so, Richmond Hill. There you go. Uh, and Richmond Hill is a community uh, or an electoral district where there are a lot of Iranian Canadians. Mm. And uh, there's a man named Kaveh Sharuz who is running Not for, yep, well, running for uh, the nomination to be the conservative candidate. And, uh, well, he says he had to drop out of the race, mm. according to the article. More than 100 Iran uh, Iranian Canadians sent a letter to conserv conservative leader Pierre Polyev on Tuesday calling for an investigation of the party's handling of allegations of Iranian regime interference in an Ontario writing nomination race. Those who signed the letter include academics, physicians, and people who lost loved ones on flight PS752 when it was shot down by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in 2020. Kaveh Sharuz, an outspoken critic of Iran's regime, announced on social media last month that he was withdrawing for the conservative nomination contest in the federal riding of Richmond Hill because he faced, quote, unprecedented foreign interference and intimidation during the campaign. Sharuz also said his pleas to the party for more time to campaign and to push back against the interference went unheeded. So the conservatives care a lot about foreign interference when it's China and it's the last two elections and when it's liberals, but when it happens within their own party and one of their candidates for a nomination race say, um, 
um, excuse me, but a foreign nation is trying to interfere with my ability to run for the nomination. Uh, well, they pretty much say, well, sucks to be you, buddy. Yeah. We don't care. Amazing how they can have like two different standards. And again, this is how they treat their own people. Right? While I wish the party well, I would be lying if I said I was not disappointed with their approach to the issue Sharuz wrote in his media statement on February 22nd. He launched his campaign on February 14th. The Conservative Party told members in Richmond Hill on February 21st that the vote would happen on March 6th and any new party memberships would have to be received by February 23rd in order to allow those new members to vote in the nomination. Sharuz said that while the party chooses the date of the nomination votes, he was left with little time to campaign. He said he wonders if the party, quote, simply wanted to wash their hands clean of a candidate that had become controversial. Interesting. So we'll probably be hearing more about that, and I'm kind of betting that uh, the conservatives won't be calling for Iran attempt to, in- to interfere in our elections or in our political system to be investigated or a subject for that special commission. Because they certainly don't want to do the work themselves in that writing in wow. Richmond Hill. No, 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 no. We can't have that now, can we? <laughs> yeah, right, Michael? Fight, 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 fight. Oh, yeah. And speaking of fight, 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 Jamel Giovanni. Yeah. I think, I, was it in his acceptance speech or something? Like this, started trashing Doug Ford. And Stephen Lecce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are not very smart people I realize they're separate parties but holy crap uh, look Jamil Giovanni wrote an article saying that former uh, Toronto City Mayor uh, John Tory was not a conservative I'm like excuse me no he's not a conservative he's a he's a, a left wing a liberal a socialist I'm like have you met John Tory <laughs> No, yep. no, Jamil, you, it, you, this guy is uh, out of his mind, in my opinion, and I'm allowed to have an opinion. Yep. That's my according, personal opinion. Yep. According to the Toronto Star, there appears to be no love lost between Premier Doug Ford's governing progressive conservatives and Pierre Polyev's federal opposition conservatives, something we talked about on a recent show. Tensions between the two Tory parties smoldering for months have flared up in recent weeks. In his victory speech after Monday's Durham by-election, newly elected federal conservative Jamil Giovanni lashed out against the, quote, liberal elites, including those running the show at Queen's Park. Quote, and when I say liberal elites, I am talking about Justin Trudeau and liberal party, but not just them, Giovanni, who worked for Ford as an advisor from 2019 until 2022, told supporters. I'm also talking about the liberal elites who run big banks and big telecommunications companies driving up the cost of everything, said the former talk show radio host who was sacked from Bell in 2021 for promoting anti-vax stuff and hated non-gays. Quote, I'm also talking about liberal elites who run the Ontario Ministry of Education in this province. Okay. He thundered after winning the by-election. Giovanni's attacks against Tory Education Minister Stephen Lecce's department comes seven weeks after Polyev blindsided Ford by poaching Cabinet Minister Parm Gill to run federally in Milton. The Premier had no notice that this then red tape reduction minister who has yet to be replaced would be immediately jumping ship even though a federal election is not expected until October 2025. Fight! 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 Asked Tuesday about Giovanni's broadside, Lecce tried to shrug it off. Lecce, the Ontario Minister of Uncomfortably Tight Pants. I'm a minister focused on getting deals. That's what I've done today and I want to celebrate the fact that kids are in school. Privately, some Ford Tories were seething. His opponent is Justin Trudeau. He may have forgotten that, said one senior provincial insider. (laughs) Well. Ah, I love it. 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 Keep fighting. They can't stand each other. The PPC wing of the conservative movement, the UPC wing of the... The UPC wing of the conservative movement... The Ford wing of the conservative movement and the Polyev wing of the conservative movement, all four of them, someone and one of the groups is fighting with someone in the other of the groups all the time. It's great. And that they, they try to make you believe that they can run a country and run a province. 
Mm. They can't even run the, the the only thing these people know how to run is their mouths. <laughs> okay. Very much so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Holy crap. I owe Charles are a beer apparently. I don't I don't know what for, but uh yeah, okay. I'll, I'm happy to buy you one. Okay. I, I don't know what I owe my beer for, but apparently I owe my beer. So yeah, happy to buy you one. No problem. All right. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a shadow? Yes, we do. Um my dog is going a little crazy right now. I'm sure you can hear that. I can I can in hear the background on the floor, yes. <laughs> um all right. Uh kids and cubs. Kids. Kits and Cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Oh, shoe button 100. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, my. Oh, my. That's yes, a, that I don't know if I want to read that one. Oh, hell. I don't care. I, I um, don't see it. What is it? Kits shoe button 100. It's the fourth, uh, fourth one from uh, the top. The boozy Michelles are interchangeable. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, Ooh. yeah. One is objectively better than the other. Mm. <laughs> yes. But then again, the other, the one that the other, the bar the other one's setting is really, really low. <laughs> well, there's another consideration, too, is that uh, one is... Uh, and when it comes to uh, Rumpel Garner, uh, she's often been accused of it, and we don't know that that was actually the case, right? Yes, indeed, indeed. Whereas yeah. with Rumpel or, or with Ferrari, uh, it's you know it's pretty pretty obvious because uh, she's in the bathtub drinking wine while she's doing the video. Yes, and uh, I've I've also agreed on my own accord to stop referring to Michelle Rempel Garner as the minister from Oklahoma boxed wine. Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to W-H-I-N-E. do that. W H I N E. But because when I say it Yeah, it goes the zero. H yeah. the H doesn't no. I can't pronounce the H to make it Why? clear. Like and, cool whip. And you know, box wine yeah. is often associated with women no, and it's mean, a little yeah, sexist yeah. and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It's, it's so I've good. stopped saying but at the time I really thought it was clever. In writing, it's clever when you speak it out loud. Yeah. And, and even in writing, I mean, it's still boxed wine. And it's still a little sexist. So. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've stopped doing that. But if people were wondering why it is, I've stopped doing that because I did it a lot for a long time. Somebody brought it to my attention and I thought better of it. I thought, you know, I can grow a little. Yeah. yeah. So just a little mea culpa and a self-correction I wanted to make uh, make public because, you know, I'm, I like to be a... Uh, transparent on those types of things well well and we're, we're collectively all, we all want to grow to be better people so we're going to make mistakes yep. we'll own up to them we'll learn from them and we'll move forward yep because i mean i don't mind mocking people but you know that's one of the reasons for example i've never commented um when i'm talking about doug ford made a, a joke about him or found a nickname for him or even just said words that involve the word fat mm -hmm. yeah I'm, because, I'm, but you know because it's it's too easy it's too easy we don't need to do it's that we're easy. better than that right. we're smarter than that but i like i know a lot of people do mm -hmm. but so yeah somebody brought that to my attention with regards to boxed wine and uh, how it could be sexist and i thought you know what you actually have a point there mm -hmm. so uh, i just wanted to mention that there since we were talking about that um Remember, sharing is caring, and word of the mouth is priceless, and you have the mouths from which we want the words to come, so please tell your peeps and poops all, all, all about us. Really, really, really appreciate it. If you would like to support us and not miss an episode, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Girl, because she's fabulous and fierce, and she has sponsored our pod page site for a second year. Thank you very much. That's uh, so. If you want to make sure that you don't miss an episode, you scan that QR code that just appeared under my chin, and that will bring you to our pod page site. If you're listening, that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, when we have an episode, it comes fresh off the bandwidth and directly to you. If you'd like to support us in other ways, bake like Kit Elaine and go to our true north eager beaver youtube page and click on our buttons like share subscribe lick them in private lick them in front of someone you love sure. hey cassie licks them in front of her in front of the cowboy every now and then 
So she tells us on the chat. <laughs> that helps us out a lot. Our subscriber base is growing. We really appreciate it. And uh, Mr. Grizzly has been keeping me uh, posted uh, through the private chat on this about uh, what our online viewership has been throughout the show. And we've cracked a thousand today. So thank you very much, everybody who took some time to spend some time with us. And if you well, like, we, we ordinarily do way beyond that, but usually but it's throughout the day live. Yes. We, this is the biggest we've ever had for a live show at 7 a.m. Yeah. So, yeah, great. Yay, keep it coming. Yeah. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, the QR code that's by Mr. Grizzly's head brings you to our coffee page because uh, we don't charge any subscription fees for this or anything. We just we shake it for tips. So if you think that we're doing good work and that we deserve some support, that's what we leave it up to you. So if you scan that QR code or if you're listening, you go to coffee, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. That brings you to our emergency hydration fund where you can leave a couple of toonies or loonies for us. And uh, that way, um, you know, we can keep on producing this for you. From the Beaver Lodge. Oh, because democracy is something that you do. Write those letters. Write those letters. From the Beaver Lodge. This is your eager beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, kids and cubs, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly. You have some words of wisdom for the kids today. Yeah, if your mental health is down in the dumps, uh, spend time with a dog. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Like physically, I'm still, I still, I've still got this bronchial infection, so I'm on medication, and I'm going to be working from home for the rest of the week, which is fine. You know, it it, it creates more work for me next week, but that, no big deal. But uh, you know, spending time, whether you adopt a dog, whether you have a dog, if you can spend time with somebody else's dog. Or a cat. If you can spend time with an animal, it will lift your mental health up like you wouldn't believe. Because when I'm physically feeling ill like this, my mental health normally goes straight into the toilet. But because I've had this beautiful dog, um, beautiful, loving animal over the last few days since my, my lovely partner, Bridget, here adopted her, she has made a huge difference in my mental health. And uh, yeah, Lola is... Um, a lovely gal. Oh, I'm seeing people are scanning the QR codes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, oh, okay. The YouTube code is back up there. Okay. Yeah, I put that up intentionally. Um, but oh, I, can, okay. I can put up the other one as well. Yeah. There we go. That's the coffee yeah, that, one. The YouTube yeah. code is so you can uh, get, go directly to, uh, if you scan that, it'll take you directly to the subscription uh, portion of the YouTube channel. And if you scan the one we currently have up there, that is the, um, that'll take you to our coffee page where if you wish to donate, you can do so. And we thank you very much for that because oh, it I does cost us money to do this show. And uh, we're just, you know, we're just trying to, I just want to break even. Man. I'm 20 grand in the hole on this stuff. I think that's the first time I've seen three times the QR code, all of them combined, scanned on the same episode. So in a live show, you, everyone. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Because really we do know that people watch yeah, at different times of the day. We get it. It's not always yep. easy to tune in at 7 a.m. We understand that. So, you know, the, the, <laughs> the folks who watch throughout the day, this message goes out to you. Thank you for scanning. Thank you for donating. Thank you for watching. This is the beauty of YouTube. You can join live for the chat. And if you join us on the YouTube channel, the True North Eager Beaver YouTube channel, you can join in the chat with the damn fam. And if you don't join there, you can certainly uh, watch at any time of the day. And usually, I think, uh, if you watch in the evening, you'll be able to uh, read the chat if you want to watch the live chat as well. It usually comes back on the replay. Uh, yeah. But it, it uh, like once the show ends, you can restart you could restart it right from the beginning, but you're not going to see the chat right away. It, it takes some time. I don't know. It's an algorithmic thing. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not that smart. I'm feeling like the count on Sesame Street because while you were talking, we had another one. Hey. Four, four QR code stand, scans. Ah, 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 ah. So, so here's, a, count. here's a funny thing right here. I can just picture doggy bounces to Copacabana. So when I posted one of the photos on Facebook of Lola, I said, this is Lola. And my one of my buddies in England was like, was she a showgirl? <laughs> <laughs> we have that in the chat. We oh, got really? the kids singing yeah. all the Lola songs. We got, her name was Lola. She, she was, was a showgirl. Show girl. That's Kit Jen. And then we got to Kit Linda going, whatever Lola wants, bum, 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 Lola gets. <laughs> and mm. then, of course, there's the kinks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the version of Lola. <laughs> Lola. Well. 
L O L A L O L A. All right, Mr. Grizzly, as a <laughs> kid, Mike says on the chats, <laughs> cue the cock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I don't have much in terms of an Easter egg, uh, but Mr. Grizzly, I was watching uh, some curling the other day, and I kind of noticed that uh, you might have a twin. Oh, really? Yes. I, He's an I, I, athlete. News to me. Just a second. Nah, I don't <laughs> see it. I don't see it. He's a little bigger, but... Yeah, I don't care. Happening. Let's ask my lovely wife. <laughs> Douglas seems to think this fellow looks like me. I'm like, nope, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm also like uh, 20 years older than him, so. No. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> hey, this guy won a gold medal at the Olympics. So. Well, good for him. There you go. All right, get some cubs. That's a nice. A nice compliment. Yes. Lean in this way, baby. This way. This way. This way. There you go. We got a dog here. Like, here, sweetheart. Here, come here. Okay. At the moment, I cannot even walk out the door to take out the recycling because of this ding dong. The dog. <laughs> yeah. Not not Paul. <laughs> oh my goodness. No. No, he doesn't. No, no. That, that's not me. That's not me, dude. That's not me. That's not oh, me. Right. My wife. <laughs> Just, yeah, uh, well, you know. Yeah. Right. I think so. <laughs> Fair enough. You are a famous international athlete, my friend. Mm. <laughs> All right. Get some cups. Have a most wonderful day. And uh, Mr. Grizzly. Um, near the end of the show you're sounding way better than you were sounding at the beginning so hopefully i hope that trend continues for the day yeah uh, thanks yeah i'm sure uh, as time goes on i'll start to feel a little bit better so take care eh? i'll right. see you bye everyone